Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my shop. In today's video, we're going to talk all about sharpening the tools you see behind you on the wall. So if you're interested on how I sharpen my lathe tools, keep watching. So this video is going to be all about how I keep my tools as sharp as I possibly can. Okay, so these are going to be the techniques that I use that work best for me. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, is it's not the only way to sharpen your tools. It's just the way that works best for me. Hopefully you'll be able to take the information that I give you here today and develop your own system so you can keep your tools as sharp as possible. Probably the number one question I get asked about sharpening uh, turning tools is how often should I sharpen my tools? And the answer to that I think is a pretty simple one. It's you're going to want to sharpen your tools when they stop cutting like a sharp tool. Now that might sound like a very simple answer, um, but if you think about it, it kind of is, right? We all know what it's like to take the tool away from the grinder, take it back over to the lathe, you touch it to the wood, and just ribbons come peeling off the wood effortless, effortlessly, right? Um, that's what you want to go for. When you have to put too much pressure on the wood to get your tool to cut, um, that's probably a sign that you're going to want to take that tool back over to the grinder and sharpen it, right? And just remember, I mean, sharp tool is a safe tool. It's going to cut how you expect. No surprises. Um, so let that be your guide. In developing my sharpening setup, I really wanted to come up with something simple, right? Uh, something that I thought I'd be able to just jump on over to the sharpening station, put an edge on my tools and get right back to work. Right? I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, you know, without as many um, um, different adjustments or other things that you would have to do um, that might take time away from turning. So, but before we go over there and take a look at the sharpening setup, let's talk about the components that you're going to need to be able to set up a sharpening station. The main component of any sharpening station is going to be the grinder. So here you see my grinder. It's a eight inch low speed, uh, bench grinder. Uh, this is a Rikon half horsepower model, right? And there's others. Uh, you can get whatever works for you. I definitely would recommend a low speed grinder as opposed to a standard grinder. Uh, the speeds run lower, which means it's going to take less metal off your tools. Um, um, it's going to run cooler. Uh, it's just a better um, um, tool all around for sharpening your lathe tools. Okay, so when you buy your grinder, it's probably going to come installed with some stone wheels. Um, those wheels will work great um, for sharpening uh, your tools, um, but eventually they're going to wear out. As they wear out, you could replace them with other stone wheels, or you could replace them with CBN wheels, which is what I have installed on my grinder. These CBN wheels are a great upgrade uh, once you've worn through or you just want to replace the stone wheels on your grinder. Um, CBN stands for cubic boron nitride and it's a material that's actually impregnated on the surface of the wheel right and it's basically just an abrasive um, and it pretty much lasts nearly forever um, it is definitely a great upgrade um, to the standard stone wheels that come with your grinder I'm going to take a little segue here just to show you these self-aligning washers that I have installed on my grinder. When you install the CBN wheels, obviously you want them to run true, right? These self-aligning washers actually help the whole setup run true. There's a, a two-part washer here. You can just see that um, there's a, um, a part closer to the wheel and a part further away that's separated by this little line. It's actually like dust and dirt in that line, but it's highlighting uh, that line for us uh, for now, so that's actually not a bad thing, right? And the, the, the washer closer to the back is actually has a concave surface, right? And the washer to the front is convex, okay? And they sit inside each other, and what happens... Um, when, if you don't use these washers, this bolt is not necessarily machined square, okay, to the shaft. And when you tighten the bolt up against a standard washer, um, because the bolt and the washer aren't necessarily machined perfectly straight, it could cause this wheel to go out of alignment, which would make the wheel wobble, okay? Because these washers, it's like, you know, one sits inside the other, okay, they'll slip slightly as you tighten up the nut, and it'll keep the wheel aligned um, on the spindle. Um, 
all the wobble goes into the washer. So here, I'm going to spin the wheel, and you can see that the washer itself is going to be out of alignment. All right, you can see that wobbling, right? Okay, but if you notice here on the outside of the wheel, it's running true. And here, let me zoom out a little bit. All right, and let me switch on the grinder, and you'll see, um, you know, this is going to be smaller, obviously, now because it's further away, but you'll see that'll still be wobbling, but this wheel's going to run perfectly true, and that's all thanks to those self-aligning washers. All right, and before we move on, I just figure I should uh, um, make a little bit of a note here and you know, say that I have the wheel guards are removed off of my grinder. And the reason that they're removed is because the wheels that I have are too wide and the wheel guards wouldn't fit, okay? Um, they're also, these CBN wheels are made out of solid aluminum, so you know, that there's like no chance that they're gonna come flying apart like a stone wheel may um, come flying apart if there's a defect in it or you know if you get a chip or whatever. Um, so if you're using stone wheels, don't ever take the um, wheel guards off your grinder. Leave them installed. You know, you're gonna have to work around them, right? You definitely do not want those big chunks of stone flying around your shop, God forbid, if uh, something happens to one of the wheels and it's or it's defective and it comes flying apart. Those guards are there for a reason. You definitely wanna leave them installed, okay? So with that said, uh, let's move on. All right, so the next thing that you're definitely going to need uh, to do some basic sharpening is you're going to need some type of platform. Now, most grinders are going to come with a platform, and you can use the platforms that come with your grinder, but generally speaking, those platforms are not sufficient for most of the grinding that we're going to need to do with wood turning, okay? So there's a plenty of aftermarket platforms that you can use. The one I'm using here is a Wolverine platform. Um, and we'll talk about that Wolverine system a little bit later on in the video. But you're definitely going to need a platform installed on one or, as you can see here, if I zoom out, I have a platform right now on both sides of my grinder. Okay, here you can see I have a, um, an arm installed um, in the uh, receiver on my one-way system. And in addition to the um, standard platforms, um, you definitely might want to consider getting one of these... Um, gouge jigs so you can sharpen your gouges okay um, it, it's really really uh, easy to keep a consistent grind on um, your gouges and I mean we all know that that consistency helps us build the muscle memory that we need to properly use our tools okay so um, yeah this is the uh, the one-way um, um, gouge sharpening jig okay just something else you might want to add to the arsenal Okay, so those are the basic things you're going to need to set up a nice sharpening station for, you know, repeatable grinding of all your tools. Um, like I said before, I mean, you know, what we're going for is, is we want um, consistent bevels on all the tools. So we get very much used to using the tools a certain way. We got to build that muscle memory. So we're using the tool the same way every time, right? We definitely know that we want to do the anchor bevel cut or the ABC um, of wood turning. Um, and part of that, the B is the bevel. We want that bevel to be consistent. Um, so when we lay that tool down on the tool rest and we engage the bevel, it's pretty much at the same spot all the time. Um, so when we do those cuts, it's not like we're having to relearn how to use a tool every time, right? We definitely, um, it's a lot easier if your um, bevel angles stay consistent for you. Now with that said, do the angles of your tools really make all that much a difference? Well, to some degree, yes. Um, there's acceptable ranges for almost every uh, lathe tool. Um, and, but if you ask 10 wood turners, what's the best angle for, let's say, a, a spindle roughing gouge? you might get 10 different answers. If you ask them what's the best angle for a bowl gouge, uh, you might get 20 different answers, right? So uh, it's really kind of subjective to some degree, but there is an acceptable range for most tools. So you're gonna wanna stay within that range. But the bottom line is, is you really gotta use what um, um, bevel angle works best for you. So once you develop that bevel angle that works best for you, you definitely wanna find a way to keep repeating that same angle on your tools all the time, okay? And that's what we're gonna talk a little bit more about right now is how to get these tools sharp, just using some basics. And then again, it's a little bit more um, um, of how I have my setup set up 
So I can get repeatable bevel angles on all my tools and, and as simple and as quickly as possible. So in this segment, I'm just gonna make an assumption that all you have is a grinder and a platform. And how are we gonna sharpen our tools with just a grinder and a platform? And you can sharpen most of your tools this way. Um, we're just gonna use the platform and we're gonna match the bevel that's already on the tool to the wheel. Okay, and how we're gonna do that at first is we're actually gonna start by blacking in or blackening in the bevel with a Sharpie. Okay, you can see I'm just basically painting in the bevel with a Sharpie, right? So you get the idea, right? And I left some of it not blackened in so you can see the bevel, right? Okay, so it's blackened in with the Sharpie. All right, the next thing to do would be to loosen the platform you know, you're going to loosen that however your platforms work. Come on. Ugh. I got that on there pretty tight, right? So we're going to loosen that platform, and then we're going to angle it so we can match the bevel on the tool. Hopefully from this angle, you can see what I was talking about with the, uh, you know, matching the bevel angle that's already on the tool up to the wheel. Okay, to verify that, we're just going to turn the wheel by hand a little bit while we're holding the tool against the wheel, okay? And then we can check to see how close we were by looking at that bevel. Let's see if we can get that in focus, right? And you can see here, I'm only hitting down by the heel just a little bit, right? So we're gonna make a little adjustment on this platform, okay? And then we're gonna try again. So I'm just gonna loosen up the platform a little bit and lower it the front just a touch, and then we'll try that again. Okay, and we'll take a look. And now we can see that we have it scratching from the bottom pretty much to the top. Okay, so now we have it at about the same angle that it already was. Okay, and then we can then sharpen this tool. So just using the grinder and using the platform, matching the pre-existing bevel on your tool, which should be the one that you're used to using at this point, right? Um, and you can see you get a nice sharp tool, right? And a fairly consistent bevel angle all the time. Uh, but let's face it, I mean, every time you adjust that platform, you know, if it's not perfect, you're gonna be changing the uh, bevel angle on your tool slightly and I mean, what's going to happen over time is it might wind up going, you know, out of adjustment to the point that you're using a bevel angle that's not the one that you want. So, you know, how can you ensure that every time you adjust that platform, it's pretty much right on the money, okay, without having to use your tool? And I'll show you how to do that. Now that we have this platform adjusted where we want it, how can we ensure that every time we have to sharpen that same tool, right, we can get this platform set back exactly how it was without having used the tool. Now let's face it, the bevel on that tool is really small, right? And we want to make sure that we get this, you know, um, as accurate as possible to keep that grind as consistent as possible. So what you could do is you could take a piece of plywood and you can see, you see I have a little strip of plywood here and I'm going to lay it so it's flat here on the platform. And what I'll do is, is I'll just kind of scribe around with a pencil a line around that wheel. Okay, so hopefully you can see that on the camera, right? So I got a line there inscribed on the, uh, um, on the piece of pl uh, plywood. So what you do is just take this over to the bandsaw and um, cut this line off, and, um, um, and then you would be able to then repeat that angle uh, every time uh, with consistency, okay? Uh, for me, I usually, this platform is usually set to 55 degrees. I had to change it um, to do that demo with the uh, um, spindle roughing gouge. So here is my 55 degree, okay, my 55 degree gauge, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it flat on the platform. I'm gonna loosen up the platform 
and I will just let the platform adjust until that wheel sits in the curve and the platform sits flat and then take that handle and tighten it down. Okay, and I've tightened that down pretty significantly because I want this to stay locked at this 55 degrees. But you can see that's a very easy way to consistently put that 55 degree angle back on that wheel. Okay, and if you look on the inside here, what I did was to make sure that this was nice and smooth, okay, after I cut it out on the bandsaw, I actually sanded it down here right on the wheel. Now see, some people might say, oh, you don't want to do that, you'll clog up your CBN wheel, and, and that's true, okay, so I did clog it up with some um, sawdust, okay, but all I took was some lacquer thinner and a toothbrush, and I cleaned that all right off, okay, and the wheel's fine, um, um, but that's what I did, and that way I know I have an extremely consistent curve for this piece to sit right on that wheel. Okay, so that's a pretty simple method on how to keep um, um, many of your tools sharp. So uh, you could actually just use the platform only um, and sharpen every tool that you have, okay? So you can sharpen um, um, your, obviously your spindle roughing gouge, you know, your skew. Uh, I do that on the platform. Um, I actually freehand the, uh, the parting gouge, or I'm sorry, the parting tool, right? I freehand that, so, you know, no um, platform needed, although you could use a platform if you, you know, if you wanted. Um, um, all the scrapers done on the platform, uh, I mean, that's what I do, right? And that's the majority of the tools right there. So, I mean, the only thing that's really left are the gouges, right? So, and, and, and you'll see in a few minutes, it's like, you know, the, when I set up this system that I use, it was all based on me starting off with my bowl gouge, which I actually sharpen on the platform. So, um, I do my spindle gouges different, and it's just a holdover from how I used to do them all the time. And once again, we're talking muscle memory, so it's just like, that's what I'm used to. Um, but... You know, I adopted the 40-40 grind on a bowl gouge uh, when I took a class uh, with Ashley Harwood. And, you know, in, in that class, we learned how to sharpen that gouge by hand. And I've been doing it that way ever since. And that's done on a platform. So, um, so with that said, um, let's jump into the system that I have developed for myself, right? And I'll kind of talk about why or, or how it got to where it is and why. And, you know, I'm really just trying to keep things as simple as possible so it'll make it as easy as possible for me for when I have to sharpen my tools. All right, I'm trying to keep me out of the frame as much as possible, but here you can see um, my whole grinding station or sharpening station, right? And you can see that I have on this side is a platform. Now this is an, uh, um, a Stuart Batty tools platform um, that I picked up. I don't think that they're um, available anymore. Um, although I, I, you could use um, a Wolverine platform, it wouldn't make any difference. And I have this set at 40 degrees, okay, and there are lines drawn here also at 40 degrees, and I have the, the lines marked with some uh, blue painter's tape. Um, and that's the basis on how I sharpen my bowl gouge, okay? And from there, right, we go to the other side. Um, well, before we jump to the other side, so what I sharpen here is my bowl gouge and also my spindle roughing gouge. Okay, so my spindle roughing gouge, also a 40 degree bevel, so I sharpen that here. Okay, every other tool that I have is sharpened over on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to hop across the, um, um, the frame here real quick and so I can um, address the other side. Okay, magic of video, I'm over here now, right? So on this side, let me take this platform out, okay? And let me put it away, all right? You can see here I have a Wolverine um, receiver, okay? And on that Wolverine receiver, I have an arm, okay, that I, you can use, right? And um, um, this can be used for a lot of things, but the only thing that I use this for um, is to sharpen my spindle gouges, okay? And that's going to be in conjunction with, or in addition to, the spindle um, gouge jig, or the gouge jig, right? I guess you can sharpen bowl gouges with this as well. So not necessarily just a spindle gouge jig, although that's what I use it for. Okay. So let me put that aside for now. All right. So over here, like I said, the Wolverine system, and up here you're going to see a couple platforms, right? And this platform I have set 
at 55 degrees and it is locked in there and you saw me do that earlier in the video right so it's locked in at 55 degrees so i can always get that 55 degree angle right all right so let's put that away real quick all right and so this one is set for 15 and we're going to start here all right so when i was doing my keeping it simple system right so um the next angle i mean i'd like i said over here i was doing my um bowl gouge 40 40 grind also doing my spindle roughing gouge the next tool i wanted to make sure i, sh I could sharpen um was my skew all right, so I just grabbed a skew, and I sharpened the skew using this 15-degree um, platform, okay? So uh, I kind of, like, eyeballed this, like, when I set it up, and um, now that I have a, uh, a digital protractor, uh, you know, my 15-degree angle here is probably, like, 16 and a half. So, like I said, it really, the angle itself really doesn't make all that much different, right? As long as you're in the ballpark, right? But you can see how I sharpen this tool. Um, I just lay it up here and I'll just sweep through the back. I like to have this little curve on my skew, right? Um, but it's sharpened on either side of the platform just to make it symmetrical, right? So when we went from the skew at 15 degrees, right? What I needed is I needed to put a negative rake on all my scrapers. Okay, so here I grabbed a giant round nose scraper and you can see I have a negative rake and this, all my scrapers are ground exactly the same way. Okay, so I start with a 15 degree negative rake and I, I just tried a negative rake scraper and I just really liked it. Okay, and I liked it so much that all my scrapers I ground with a negative rake. So, and I already had this platform for 15 degrees. So that's the angle that I used for the top bevel. Okay, so you can see here how I would just sharpen this, okay, and sharpen that tarp top bevel, okay? But we want this total angle here, right, 15 degree top and this um, bottom angle, I wanted it to be around 70 degrees, okay? So 15 plus 55 would be the 70, okay? And that's where I came up with the 55 degree angle for this other platform, okay? Let me get that installed. All right. So now I have that set at 55 degrees. And now I can then use that to grind the main bevel on all my uh, scrapers. Okay. So there you go. That's, you know, um, bowl gouge, spindle roughing gouge. Um, we went to skew and now all the scrapers. Okay. So then really kind of like what's left, right? I mean... Uh, here, let me put this away. Okay, so here's parting tool. How I mentioned earlier, I literally just eyeball this. I was watching a video uh, uh, one time. Um, it was done um, by uh, Craft Supply USA, and they, you know, they recommended just sharpening your parting tool by hand. And I gave it a shot, and it's really simple. It's really fast. I don't have to make any specific adjustments. Um, I don't have anything where this is the right angle for. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just not... And I don't want to buy any more platforms, so I, I just sharpen this by hand. I mean, I really think it's all that difficult. You just have to be careful that you keep the... Uh, um, um, you know, the point of it. So it basically goes straight across, you know, or perpendicular to the tool itself. Okay. But I, like I said, I just freehand this. Okay. So then that's really everything. And then it comes up to the last, right? The last will be then, then, you know, obviously remove the 15 degree platform. Okay. And then we'll install the arm. And you can see I have a piece of tape on this arm, okay? This piece of blue tape for me is just like a stop. I have a Sharpie mark there, but the blue tape actually works like a positive stop because it generally won't slip past it and it gives me an idea where that needs to go. So I'll lock this handle down, okay? And then I'll take a spindle gouge. Sorry about that. Um, I probably should have had one just ready to go. So, but then I'll take a spindle gouge, right? And then I'll use the, you know, the spindle gouge um, um, jig right or the gouge jig one way gouge jig right and i'll just slip this in here okay now there's a lot of different opinions on how far this steel should stick out um 
and what the angle of this should be. Uh, you're just going to have to find something that works for you, okay? So what I did was, is I just went to Thompson's website, okay? Now, on Thompson's website, they actually have a printable version um, of a PDF that you can print out, and it is this exact tool set at an angle that, um, that Thompson's uses for when they send you all their... Um, um, their gouges. He, he pre-grinds them all for you and he also recommends that the um, the tool itself stick out from the edge of the jig one and three quarter inches. So to verify that that's one and three quarter inches I know some people use just a wood block with a hole drilled in it or whatever. I have this little teeny um, square that I use. It's set for one and three quarter inches, and I just loosen this up so it'll, you know, the tool slides slightly, and I just kind of put this on and then push this. Let me see. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. You can see what I'm doing, and just push this until it touches. Okay. So now I know that that's sticking out exactly one and three quarter inches. Okay, and it's good to go. All right, this angle, once I set it, I've never changed it. Like I said, I set this off of the um, um, uh, Thompson's guide that he uses, and I've been using it ever since. Okay, and then that just will sit in the pocket, and you know, hopefully, we all know how to use this. Uh, um, one way jig, but I'll give a demo in just a bit, right? Because I'm actually going to sharpen one of every type of tool just so you can see what I'm doing. But then, then I would just use this. And then I will consistently have, and this is the same distance every time. This is the same angle every time. This sticks out the same amount every time. So I get a consistent grind on all my spindle gouges. Uh, that's the system I used. I, I, I just hung these off of some PVC pipe just to keep them in convenient reach, right? So everything's right there ready for me to go. It's really fast and simple. And that's the system I use. Okay, so with that said, let me just kind of walk you through sharpening at least one of each tool. Okay, to set this platform up for my 40-40 grind, right, um, I use this, uh, it's a Stuart Batty angle gauge, okay, and it has a 40 degree, let's see, can you see that, right? It has a 40 degree um, um, spot on it, and that is just this small flat surface here. Right? So the idea is to put this flat surface down on the platform, you know, loosen the knob so it'll um, pivot, and then just make it so this flat surface sits flat on the wheel. So, and that's all that, you know, that you got to do to get that to line up, okay? So once you get that lined up, you lock these nuts in place, and then the next step is, is actually to get these 40 degree marks, okay, on your platform. And all I did was, is I took... Uh, just a piece of wood and I got a 40 degree uh, line drawn on there and just cut it on my bandsaw and you know sanded it smooth measured it made sure it was at 40 degrees right and then I can lay that so the top edge is perpendicular okay um, to the wheel right and then you can see that the 40 degree line here pretty much aligns with that blue tape okay all right and to do the other side I just turned it over, right? So once again, just line that up so it's you know pretty much perpendicular. You know, and I'm actually pushing it right up against the wheel, so I know it's flat against the wheel. And then you can see how this blue tape or, or this line here is you know pretty much in line, okay, with the 40 degree angle. Okay, so there's my two 40 degree marks. I know my platform's at 40 degrees, and now we can sharpen the uh, bowl gouge. All right, so to sharpen this bowl gouge, okay. What I'm going to do is, is um, there's like a, um, this is a, uh, a V-groove uh, bowl gouge from Thompson's, okay? Um, the, um, this V-groove uh, will work, a parabolic will work. The U-shaped bowl gouges, they'll work, but not as good, right? Um, but the idea is, is to get this flat surface here on the inside flute, right, to be parallel to the um, base okay or the platform and you put that parallel and in line with that 40 degree mark and that's how you would then grind that wing okay so hopefully that kind of you can see that on the camera and that makes sense right uh, let me zoom in a little bit all right so i zoom that in a little bit maybe you can see that a little bit better right but that's how you um, um i grind that wing 
okay? And then to grind the other wing, it's the same thing, but just on the other side, right? We want to make sure that that flat surface of the inside flute is parallel to the base, right? And align that with the line that we um, have with the blue tape to get that 40 degree angle. And then we will grind that other, um, that other wing. Okay, and once we get them both ground, we just have to make sure that we hold this down on the base, okay, uh, or the platform, okay, and just roll this through to get a nice blended grind across that bowl gouge, okay? So let's give it a shot. Wait for the grinder to come up to full speed. Let's touch it on the grinder. Grind that wing. Okay, we're going to come over here and grind the other one. And then blend that through. Okay. So let me see if I can get that on the camera nice so you can see it. Okay, so there you can see the, uh, the grind on my 4040 gouge. All right. And that's how I grind my uh, bowl gouge. Okay, you can see here that I've actually ground, ground some of the heel away, right? So, and that really doesn't matter. That's just personal preference, right? Grinding that heel away. Well, we got to keep that in focus, right? Um, but yeah, so that's how I start out this whole system. And it's all about grinding my 40-40 bowl gouge. All right, so we have the grinder up to speed. Let's do the next tool in the progression, right? So that's going to be my spindle roughing gouge. All right, so I'll just lay that on the, um, the platform, all right? And I'll actually start at one end and I'll engage the tool and just roll through. All right, start here, roll through. Roll through. And you can see that, I mean, I, I got a nice, you know, fresh cut bevel on there and tool's ready to go. Okay, so I've repositioned the camera onto the other wheel, okay? And you can see I have the 15 degree um, platform installed, and now it's time to sharpen the skew, okay? So I'm just gonna take it like this, okay? And I'm gonna put it straight into the wheel, and then I'm gonna sharpen just by sweeping it over just a little bit. Okay, and that's how I sharpen this, you know, one inch skew. All right, and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. All right, and I'll just keep doing this until I have fresh metal. All right, and you can see I'm kind of doing like three passes at a time on each side to be consistent. Okay, and that's what I do to sharpen my skew, okay? All right, so now I have a little small skew that I also use, okay? And I sharpen this one just slightly different, so I figured I might as well show you this. I leave the angle exactly the same here on the platform, but what I'll do is, is I'll take that bevel and I'll line that up perpendicular to the wheel, okay? And then what I'll do is, as you can see now, that's offset slightly as far as the, the steel um, into the platform. And I'll just put that on here and I'll just take this straight back and forth. Okay, that keeps that skew angle nice and straight. All right, I use this skew primarily um, um, to create the tenons on my bowls and hollow forms. So then we'll take them, we'll flip this over to the other side. Once again, just line that up and just sit there and make a nice back and forth motion to keep that cutting edge nice and straight. Okay. And then what I'll do is, is um, like I said, since I use this to make tenons, um, um, on my uh, bowls and hollow forms, um, I'll actually take a burnishing rod and then curl a burr on this and basically just use it as a scraper. All right, moving right along, since we have this 15 degree um, um, platform on here, right, 
I can use that platform then to do the top bevel on my um, scrapers, okay? And to just put the, redo that edge, I'm just gonna sweep through. Okay, and you can see I kept the, the surface here flush or flat up against the platform, okay? And that's what gave me that nice top bevel, okay? So now once I have the top bevel done on all my scrapers, it's time to do the main bevel. Okay, here you can see I swapped out that 15 degree platform for this 55 degree platform. Okay, so now time to sharpen the main bevel on my um, scrapers. So to do that, I'll just once again lay it flat and just sweep through. And there you go, we got a nice, nice clean cut bevel. Okay, um, when we're done all the demo of the sharpening, I'll show you how I use a burnishing rod and I do this on all of my uh, scrapers to use a burnishing rod to basically curl up a burr um, uh, on these scrapers. Okay, so here we are with the, uh, um, you know, getting to work on the spindle gouge. And you can see I have the, you know, tool already in the uh, holder. And I'm going to use my little square to give me my one and three quarter inch you know, tool sticking out from the end of the jig. Okay, and I'm just gonna take the end and put it in the little pocket. And then I'll just lay this down on the wheel. Okay, you can sharpen the nose. Lay this down to sharpen the wings. Do that on both sides. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I'm basically letting you know, the weight of this jig and the weight of the tool, you know, just use that to put the pressure on the wheel and just cut away a little bit at a time. All right, here you can see my sharpened uh, spindle gouge, right? And you can see I, it's like, you know, what I'm trying to do here is, is I'm trying to have, you know, um, a nice rounded point, right? And I want these wings to basically have just a little bit of an arch to them, okay? Just a little bit of an arch. Um, um, some people like them to go straight. Uh, what you don't want is you don't want them to have a valley, okay? You definitely don't want them to have a valley. You can see on this side too, it's the same. It's like nice arch, right? Um, you definitely don't want to have a valley in there and you definitely don't want to have like any little... Sorry, I'm having a hard time keeping that in focus. You don't want to have any little, you know, nicks or, or dents or, you know, imperfections in the way that this bevel goes across, right? Or you might want to just have to regrind, okay? So, and that's really all just a matter of keeping an eye on the tool while it's on the wheel, okay? Um, and that's pretty much uh, how I sharpen my tools. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit earlier, I was gonna show you how I curl this burr, uh, this burr up um, on my scrapers. And here's this small skew that I use, um, you know, for doing my tenons. And what I'll do is, is I take this burnishing rod and just this standard burnishing rod and I'll take it and I'll lay it on that bevel okay and just a little bit offset from the actual angle right and I'll just put some pressure on it and just press on there and just to curl that metal just around a little bit so it creates like a small hook okay and I'll see if I can get a close-up of that and show that um, um, you know I'll put a slide in the video but uh, that actually just curls up a little hook and that'll just help peel the wood off um, nice and clean um, when I'm making my tenons. All right, and I do exactly the same thing with like, you know, my, my scrapers. Um, this round nose scraper. I do the same thing if it was, you know, any other scraper, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna lay this burnishing rod pretty much along the bevel and then tilt it a little bit, right? And then just using as much pressure as I can push on there. I'm just basically pushing that burnishing rod into the point so it curls that just that edge of that point ever so slightly up. And I can feel that there's a nice, a nice curl on there or a nice hook. 
and that will cut super super clean um, when I'm using the scraper okay so there you have it maybe I gave you some ideas on how to set up a sharpening system for yourself this is how I do it right so I mean I, I'm not gonna say that my way is the definitively right way I mean it's just what works best for me so hopefully I gave you some information so when you set up your sharpening setup or if you're developing your setup you know maybe it'll give you some ideas on how you can make your setup work best for you okay um, this is what I do like I said the angles of your um, um, bevels uh, you know, as long as they're within an acceptable range for the type of tool that you're sharpening, I mean, that's good enough, right? If it's working for you, it works for you. Um, I use what works for me. Um, but based on certain things that I do, um, you know, like I said, the uh, my bowl gouge, right? I mean, I, I do the 40-40 grind on my bowl gouge now. So my spindle roughing gouge it just conveniently sits now at 40 degrees because i have a platform set for that it's you know a lot easier than having to just you know uh, loosen you know readjust and and set up you know one of the other platforms or you know i don't want to have to go out and buy another platform right um because i want that to be at like let's say 45 degrees i mean it's just 40 degrees 45 degrees not that big a deal right so i mean the thing works my, my spindle roughing gouge works great so uh, i mean i'm happy with it at 40 degrees right and uh you know my skew right when i set it up i mean i was shooting for 30 degrees right so i you know but i had to do a lot of that by eye um, um you know because i didn't have any way of accurately uh um setting that up for a 15 degree angle um so i mean i just used a um a standard protractor and i got pretty close right i mean like i said i'm probably right now at about like 16 and a half degrees even though it says 15 degrees on my little piece of tape on that platform right so you know but that's pretty close right so and it's you know within the acceptable range of a skew so you know um, so what's that, uh, um, 32, 33 degrees, 34 if it's at 17, right? So I, I'm, you know, it's not that big a deal one way or another, okay? But then, I mean, since I have that platform set up, you know, I wanted negative rake scrapers. So it's like, well, I had to start out with that, uh, um, that bevel at something. So why not start at 15 degrees since I already had a platform set for it, right? So, you know, and so, I mean... Your scrapers, you know, they you know, a dead mid range. Or I'm, I, I probably shouldn't say that, right? But you know, somewhere in the acceptable range for a scraper is about seventy degrees, right? So, you know, if I'm starting at fifteen and then I, um, and I add fifty five to that, right? I'm going to come up with seventy degrees. So the the actual angle of the scraper itself is seventy degrees. So. 55 degree platform for the second platform. I mean, you know, I don't always regrind that top bevel either. I mean, most of the time I'm just regrinding the 55 degree, right? Um, and then, you know, using that burnishing rod to curl that burr on there. I mean, that's what I do, right? And then we saw when I did my spindle gouges, right? The spindle gouges, I still use that Wolverine system. I mean, I think it's great, right? I mean, I could grind them by hand. Um, I don't know that I want my spindle gouges to be a 40-40 grind. I, I, you know, I think my spindle gouges right now are right about 30-ish, right? Um, and I can get into some tighter places with those, um, you know, a lot better than I could with, um, um, if I had that, you know, if I was sharpening by hand on that 40-degree platform. So, you know, I like that Wolverine system for my spindle gouges. You know, it's just what works for me. Um, on that arm... You know that adjustable arm that has the pocket that the Wolverine jig sits in, right? I actually have another Sharpie mark on there, so I can do a more traditional bow gouge grind using the same setup. I just have to pull that arm out to that line that I have drawn on the arm, right? So if I, if I set it all up from there, I don't change the angle of the jig at all. It stays exactly the same. The amount of uh, tool that sticks out at the, um, from the edge of the jig is still, you know, one and three quarter inches. And I can do a, you know, a normal, or I guess, or a standard, you know, sweat back type um, bowl gouge grind. Um, if I do need that grind, you know, for like to, to demo that for somebody or whatever, I mean, I, I don't use that grind that much anymore, but I can still grind it. Right. So it's the same setup, a very simple, I have a couple other specialty tools that I sharpen and it's really not worth going into them, um, at this point, but, um, a lot of those are done just using the existing angles and stuff that I have right now, or they're done freehand. So, um, that's what works for me. Um, 
like I said, I hope you got something out of the video. If you did, great. Um, um, you know, hit the like button for the video. That would be awesome, right? Um, if you could, please hit the subscribe uh, um, button for the channel. That also would be awesome. Um, share the video with your friends. Also awesome, right? Uh, you know, all that stuff, you know, um, just helps me in the YouTube algorithm and it gets, you know, more people to see my video. So, I mean, that, that would be great for me. And uh, I guess that's it for this video. So, um, uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I'll see you next time in Scott's Mini Woodshop. Have a great day.